authority upon ourselves and upon our our right hand or upon our own works to keep the law of God. And then what happened with the children of Israel? Mm -hmm. They failed, didn't they? Mm -hmm. All of the Lord said we will do. They taught themselves to have enough power, enough strength, and have righteousness of themselves and their moral carnal mind to be able to keep the law of God. But they found out, no, you guys are deceived. But God gave them that opportunity. Okay, you want to keep the law? Let's see if we can. And God knows they couldn't keep it. Because the law is spiritual, we are so under sin. We, there is something to be kept divinely with God has to abide in our souls. So then we could too be placed in ourselves, placed in our positions in the Jewish and we say, yes, Lord, I'm going to keep your commandments. But we cannot keep in our out of ourselves. That's what we need to recognize. Let's not repeat the history of ancient Israel. Mm -hmm. Let us focus on what God is telling us to yeah, abide in him. Well, when you speak of ancient Israel and everything, yes, they did fail. Now, what was what was Israel supposed to do all the time? Israel was supposed to know their history mm -hmm. and everything. So, what what the nation of Israel when they were in captivity in Egypt? What, what were the history they're supposed to keep always in their in the back of their mind? How God delivered them. Well, not how God no, remember, God hadn't delivered them yet fully. I don't talk about that, but he did deliver after. What was talking it talking about to... the beginning where the yes. ones that crossed the Red Sea? Oh, well, yeah, eventually they crossed the Red Sea. Yeah, they were supposed to remember this, but where did it go? Who was their father? Was a, who? Abraham. Mm -hmm. It was, he was, he was, their father is called like their, like said, their father Abraham, minus their father in heaven and everything. But the father of the, of the initial nation was Abraham and everything. Now, what was Abraham? The story of Abraham was supposed to be passed on from generation to generation. Like the Israel nation, they were supposed to know their heritage. They were supposed to they trace themselves all the way back to the sons of Jacob and everything. Now, the story of, of Abraham was supposed to be well in their mind. They weren't supposed to lose it. Now, what was the story of Abraham? God said, do your, do your seed. All nations are going to be blessed. And that was supposed to be fulfilled in through what? Through Isaac. Now, what did Abraham do? He followed he ended up well, again. What his, he ended up taking on another wife, which broke one of the which broke the seventh commandment that we'll learn about a little later and everything. He took on Hagar as his wife and ended up what having a what a son named Ishmael, and it was not the promise of God. Mm -hmm. So what did he do? He thought he took he, upon himself. He thought he kind of did what he said. All that the Lord said, we will do. We will do. I'm going to do it. Yeah, he kind of did the same thing that the nation um, of Israel did. He thought he could fulfill the law of God. But he didn't realize that God was going to be the one doing it. So over time and everything, he had a very unhappy marriage and everything with Hagar. And then eventually Hagar had to be sent away. And then when they both had the righteousness of faith, because the Bible says when um, when um, Sarah or Sarah or Sarah had strength in the Lord, faith in the Lord, she had strength to conceive. Mm -hmm. And she conceived who? Yeah, Isaac. Isaac and everything. So that's why I said, so right now is you got to see that the Lord is the one that ultimately has, he makes the promise, he must ultimately fulfill it. Nothing that we can do. That's mm -hmm. what Abraham failed to do, and that's what they failed to learn the lesson from Abraham, because they did not pass that on from generation to generation. Or else they would have not have committed what they done. Exactly. Yes. And I have another comment now that you said that. Mm -hmm. uh, I talk to people, and I ask them if they kept the Sabbath. And I used to, before used to be, did you keep the Sabbath? <laughs> And then Ronnie corrected me on that. Not to be saying that. What was the reason? I forgot exactly. Well, we learn right now. It's, it's right now, really with us, is we can never, as him and man, we can never keep the Sabbath. It's only Christ kept the Sabbath as his purity. So right now, is, the saying we kept the Sabbath means we're doing it in our own strength. Exactly. Because remember, cause we're a carnal mind. Is, we're, all, we're a sinful nation. We'll, we will always continue to sin until Christ what does what? Replaces his life with ours and everything, so Christ can say, "Can say, Lord, take, Lord says, take my life. Let me take away your life and everything. And trans you have my victories, have my conquering, have my thing, have my this and everything. So we must. So like right now, when you say that right now, you're kind of looking into yourself, saying, I can keep the seven. I can keep the seven day Sabbath and everything. We're not looking to Christ. We're supposed to say, Christ, mm -hmm. do do thy will and thy good pleasure. 
and everything. So it's wrong to say to keep this to keep the seventh day. It doesn't mean we dishonor the seventh day. And that's what I was gonna say. Another comment. <clears throat> Just because we're we're telling you that um, we are telling you that the the commandments are to be kept with the mm -hmm. spirit of God in our lives. Jesus Christ in our hearts. But that doesn't mean we're just going to stay idle. Or we're just going to be, okay, I'll go work on the Sabbath. And I'll just have Jesus in my heart keeping it for me. Yeah. It doesn't work like that, you know. Mm -hmm. We're to be obedient children. Mm -hmm. But the fullness of the Sabbath, the fullness of spirituality, the flesh cannot go there. That's what I'm trying to say. Can you explain yeah. that a little better? Well, what you're saying is if we, we, even though we cannot measure up to the full measure of the law, doesn't mean that we don't try to, like right now, there's a, there's a Sabbath and everything. We're not to do our own pleasure on the Sabbath day and do all this. Thing. We're, like I said, as far as we, we try to show reverence to the Sabbath day, worship God, sing and everything, do, don't do our own pleasure on the Sabbath day, don't work and everything. But but right now and then God, let God it's like we want to show due reverence to the to God's commandments and everything, and if we show God's reverence to the commandments, but we must focus we look on Jesus and everything, and God will make up the rest. God will say, oh, when God looks at you, God says, this man will do what I say, do what I, he will follow, he will obey my words and everything, and then God will ultimately replace his life with yours. He'll say, take my life and everything. So like I said, just because we're saying right now is we cannot, that's the only thing because we're saying we cannot keep the law, doesn't mean we show your regard, oh, I can't keep the, these laws, what's the point of just throwing them away? No, we're not saying that. We don't want to throw away the law. It's still there. Mm -hmm. God's going to judge man ultimately on the law so. and everything. But not now, what does God say? The, remember, the law said we must die because we all broken the law. We deserve death. We deserve death. But God says he wants to put, not put you under the law. And everything. So God wants to want God wants to give grace to people that but want to obey grace. Him. Mm -hmm. And that's what it means to be under grace. Under grace doesn't mean the law doesn't exist. And or it doesn't mean yeah, exactly. Yeah, or that is nailed to the cross. Yeah, it's not nailed to the cross. The law is the law is still there. Exactly. We're just saying right now is we must look we must ultimately look to Christ. Everything is in Christ. And everything. The law cannot the law cannot save us. Only Christ. It, it can only condemn us. It condemns us. It shows our condition. Yeah, but, it, but, it, but it's supposed to show it. It's supposed to bring us to the foot of the Amen. cross, to Christ, mm -hmm. and everything. And, that, and remember, so like I said, the most people want to think because most people want to do away with the law, saying they can't keep it. That's not correct. Exactly. <clears throat> Page twenty-five. Visiting iniquity. We have studied the part of the commandment which contains a direct precept, and must give a little attention to the last part. Exodus twenty verse five. I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers, the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. How many have ignorantly proclaimed the injustice of this, and have railed against God for punishing the children for the iniquities of the fathers? But God does not do this. And his commandment does not say that he does. God says to the wicked man, Ezekiel 18, 14, 17, 18, 19, and 20. If he beget a son that says all his father's sins that he has done, and consider it does and does not such like, he shall not die for the iniquity of his father, but shall surely live. As for his father, because he, he cruelly oppressed all his brethren, by violence and did that which is not good among his people, lo, even he shall die in his iniquity. Yet say I you, why does not the son bear the iniquity of the father, when the son has done that which is lawful and right, and has kept all my statutes, and he has done them, he surely he, he shall surely live. The soul that sins, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. The new birth, the way of escape. God does not punish one person for another's sins. Note what the commandment says. Visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, it says, But one man's sin entered the world, 
and death by sin. So death passes upon every man. So because of his sin, not because no, but not because of his sin, but that he that all have sin. So like I said, so it's not just one man. Remember, not just because Adam sinned. Remember, Adam gave us what? A sin, yeah, we got through Adam. We had a sinful nature. But we still, regardless of the fact, is we all sin. Remember, by when Christ came down came down to the earth and everything, some 2,000 years ago, Christ came with that what? Sinful nature. He had, a, he had the propensity to sin, but sin not. So like I said, that, that's what we got to understand right now. So like I said, so like I said, when we're talking about these commandments and everything, everyone is going to be judged according to themselves and everything. We're not going to be, our sins are not our our judgment is not going to be based on somebody else and everything. We must all come to the foot of the cross ourselves. It's an individual what? Walk. It's, a, it's an individual walk and everything. He said, "There is one man who did not sin and who knew no sin, and death did not pass upon him." And Deb did not pass upon him. He went into the grave, a victory over it. The one of the sons of God. <clears throat> this one was the son of God's love. He can <clears throat> he comes to all, and as many as received him, to him he gave power to become the sons of God. So what does it say right there? He gave what? Power. To he become. He comes to all, and as many as what? Receive him. Not everyone's going to receive him. He says, to them, he gave power to become the what? The sons of the God. The sons of God. I didn't say we have the power to become the sons of God. He had the power. He gives you the power to become the sons of God. Because so ultimately God that's going to work out these commandments in your life. And so, so that any and every child of Adam may be the sons of God's love, even as Christ is. In Romans chapter 5, verse 19, it says, For by one man's disobedience many were made sinful, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Does all say amen to that? Mm -hmm. It says, Even as the heavens are higher than the earth, God's life and love are stronger than death. So the birth from above free, <clears throat> free from all the consequences of being born from beneath. Now what does it say? What does it mean right there? It says, God's life and love is stronger than what? Death. So the birth from, the birth from above, what would it mean the birth from above? Christ being born, came on earth to die a, sin, to die a sinless life, frees all from the consequences of being born from what? Beneath, we're born. Of, remember, each and every man is born of this earth. This earth is simple nation. So God came from the consequences. What would be that? With the consequences, the consequence of sin. For sin is a transgression of the law, and we're all what? We're all born under. We're all born under sin. So it took Christ to what? Only Christ can take us what from the consequences of sin. That's that grace that we hear about. The grace that the God says you're not going to be. I'm not. Gonna, I'm going to take you from under law. Whatever the law says, you must what? Die, because we all broke the law. But God's going to take away. God will, if you follow Him, will take you away from that consequence of the law and give you life. Let's continue reading on. Though a man be born of the most degraded parents, he may through the Spirit, through the Holy Spirit, inherit all the goodness of God. By the exceedingly greatness and precious promise of God, we are made partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in this world through the what? <coughs> through the lust. Let us read that again. It says, by the exceeding great and precious promises of God. See, it's all it is. By the grace, by the great and precious promises of God. Remember, the Bible has a lot of promises that we read in the Bible, and it's only that Christ is the one that ultimately will work those promises out through him, not in our strength and our, ourselves. So. Now let's continue reading on. The next section will be God's way is equal. We therefore see that God does not punish any person for the sins of another. He himself most expressively declares that the Son shall not bear the iniquity of the Father. His grace provides 
for deliverance even in this present life for, from the gray physical infirmities with, that which we have inherited from our first birth. The term visiting iniquities evidently means punishment for sin. This punishment for the sins of the Father comes only, only upon those who commit the same sins. This is made very emphatic. Page 27. The question naturally arises. Why only to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, hate him? The answer is indicated in the statement itself. It is because sin is self-destructive. And haters of God in the full sense of the term will entirely run out three or four generations. <laughs> That's funny. When the line of demarcation is distinctly drawn between the righteous and the wicked, so that all on one side are wholly devoted to God and filled with His Spirit, and all on the other side have sold themselves to Satan and have rejected God and His Holy Spirit, the Lord will come to confer immortality upon one class and to destroy the other. But this will be no arbitrary action. Those in the first class are not taken to heaven without seeing death, simply because they happen to be living when the Lord comes, but because they have in them the element of life. If the Lord should not come, they would continue living indefinitely, even in mortal flesh. The Lord, by conferring immortality upon them, and taking them to heaven simply grants that they grants them the privilege of continuing their life under infinitely better conditions. On the other hand, those who have rejected the Lord have rejected life, and they have chosen death, as he says. And also too, when he says, it asks the question, why only the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me? Now, right now, we got to look at this right now. Remember, the law is what? The transcript of God's character. And right now, why, why the third and the fourth generation then hate me? God says, I'll visit the iniquities of the fathers unto the third and the fourth generation and everything. Is that even shows that God's long-suffering. If you look at Israel and everything, how many times did God, if you look at even from the book of Judges, even now, how many times did God, the nation of Israel rebelled, they were thrown into captivity, and God did what? Continue to be merciful, brought them out of captivity. If you read the Old Testament, it's, they can't, they, it's a story of the nation of Israel rebelling, then following the Lord. Rebelling, then following the Lord. Rebelling, then following the Lord. And God, even, even see God, God gave them 490 probationary, the 70 weeks of Daniel chapter what? Daniel chapter 9 and everything. Where God gives them probationary time. God even gives the wicked time and everything. To do what? To try to follow Him. To and repent so, yeah, so to give repentance and everything. But I see when you look right there, it says God's long-suffering Let's continue. In Proverbs 8, 36, All they that hate me love death. Sin is self-destructive. The destruction of the wicked is not the cutting short of their probation. When all the wicked of all generations are brought to judgment in the day of the Lord, no one will be lost who could possibly be saved. Neither will any possibly possible future generation be cut off for so completely they will the wicked have rejected the principles of life that there could be no succeeding generation okay and once again man we're talking about the second commandment we're, we're before we continue on page 28 we're thinking about the second commandment to make no graven images unto mm -hmm. what unto to, unto, unto the lord and everything we don't want to do exactly what nation of Israel or what many of these heathens in the world do right now it is by, once again, it's by faith that we must believe in what? The God. It must faith we must look to God. <clears throat> if the Lord should reserve judgment, the wicked would destroy themselves by their vice and by violence. They would prey upon one another, and each one will be preyed upon by his own vice until there is not there were none left. <clears throat> So we, so we see that the coming of the Lord is literally to the last generation of this earth. Righteousness is everlasting, but sin is only for a time. There can be no such thing as continually as continuing throughout eternity. Therefore, 
no such thing as a mortal sin. 